Hey, I'm Couch Coop, and dang, this is the Outer Worlds on PC at high settings with a lot of the effects put on, and I'm not devastated at how this compares to the PlayStation 5 version. In actual fact, I feel it. Oh no, don't, yep, oh, we've lost him. He'll be back in a minute. Why don't the other big name reviewers do stuff like that? Because they're so passionate that they immediately need to start talking about the game and get that video out ASAP. Get it out for the clout. That is just unbridled passion as far as I'm concerned. On a serious note, I really don't believe those big name reviewers are still in love with the industry. I don't think they have a passion. They're literally just going through a robotic sequence. Rise of Ronin and Dragon's Dogma 2 are both out. I don't get review codes. I don't get any f free copies. I've got to just wait until I can afford it on a budgetary level. And that's breaking my heart. Anyone who knows about my samurai content and the Dragon's Dogma video got me huge numbers and I've just got to sit and wait until I can get the finances together to purchase these games which are not cheap anymore. I think also playing YouTube on New Game Plus forces me to make my content as good as I can get it. You've got your ear to the ground with the industry at the moment. A lot of big name sites are complaining about massive lack of numbers. Going for what I call the magic 500, which is 500 views on a new video, which is really great as a performance for me. You see channels at the moment, 1.5 million subscribers, moaning about the 10,000 pounds they get in a month not being enough. And every time I start moaning about my numbers, I start feeling for content creators that I know that put in just as much effort as me and don't don't even pull in the numbers that I get. An intro like that also gets rid of the casuals, so it's just us Outer Wilds fans. The game's called Outer Wilds. So a little bit like the DSX situation, this is on Epic Store for absolutely nothing and they've bundled in both of those DLC packs. Now the Gorgon one was paid and something that I loved the look of but never wanted to commit financially to it. So it's a really great opportunity but you do have to go from the start of the game. It's a level 25 entry point, but there's a few things you can do. Speed that up. I went in at level 17 and just about managed things. The reason I was attracted to Gorgon is it's blatantly a new looking planet and I want to see some new enemy variations, particularly in the monsters. And we do see some, there's not enough, and the DLC was a little bit of a letdown, but it didn't cost me anything. So it was a joy to be able to finally look at it and to go through this game at 60 frames per second at 1080 and have it on those high settings. There's another even higher notch, but if I can't afford a copy of Rise of Ronin, I very much doubt a graphics card's in order. 
PC version, crisp and smooth and detailed, doesn't even cover it. I know I say it a lot, but this is a slightly different animal at this improved performance. I mean that wholeheartedly. I was so impressed with the jump and the differences in the slowdown explosions, elements looking slightly more lavish and different like particles and stuff bouncing off things. It was a damn joy getting to see this game, how it's supposed to be looking, I imagine. The PlayStation 4 version base machine isn't terrible and the PlayStation Pro comes with some frame rate and boosts and a little bit of super sample and resolution improvement but the 5 version is just a flat version of the PlayStation 4 there's no SSD or any official release out there One of my major complaints with the base game is the lifts and load screens and placing NPCs that you need to interact with behind multiple load screens, making you backtrack and converse with individuals on the other side of this damned linear map system, which it tries to play off as an open galaxy. It fell on its face a little bit with selling us the idea that this was a space travel game. I think something like Starfield probably produces more exploration on that front. I don't think competing with a game like that was ever part of Obsidian's plan. They wanted to make a sort of fallout in space and keep that rigidity with the campaign and different subquest structures. And it does that fantastically. And discovering a new planet or seeing a locked planet on that map does kind of incentivize you to keep going. Got mixed up in some shady business on Gorgon. Should have known better. But I landed on something big. And now this job's an itch I can't stop scratching. I like that 50s, almost noir, comic book-like style that this game has, and it's sort of self-aware comedy almost, as well with a lot of the NPC-friendly characters that you've got. Once you get the planet I just showed you, the posh one, and the missions for the board, once you get there, then the amputated hand turns up with the message and Gorgon's available. I was quite shocked at that, so I went in and tried it anyway at 17, and a lot of the enemies do and don't scale, so you might want to be careful with that one, but I ranked up damn fast once in the DLC itself. I just want to say, we gotta take this job. This is the closest I ever been to starring in a serial drama. Welcome to Ambrose Manor. We were not expecting company. Please follow. Do not stray from the path. Don't worry, little fella. We're mostly law-abiding folk. <laughs> gotta admit, that was kind of funny. The idea of that manor, the estate, the sort of haunted house angle, even house on haunted hill with the architecture and 50s deco, I kind of loved it. And I liked the introduction to a lot of the new characters as well. And it's also got an embedded mystery. This is not an out and out monster annihilation fest as much as I wish it was. It's got quite a lot of intrigue in it. And I was genuinely pulled in by some of the two opening quests that it gives you. You immediately split and one of them involves, get this, going back into some living and looking at load screens on planets you've already been to. So they've upped some of the Marauder's abilities. One of them is almost like a teleport style, a little bit like the Netrunners in Cyberpunk. So it's really difficult to get a clean shot on them. And they are a lot more spongy, taking loads more bullets. These things are genuinely difficult to take down. Felix's special, still in Endgame, makes me laugh. It's a dropkick. That's it. You can't switch the weapon out or improve it at all. It's one of the more redundant specials of any of the characters, but he's the most least annoying of them. It's also the first time it actually died as well. Getting to this DLC at the lower rank meant I was pretty much swamped a lot of the time. And not that you run out of health files, it's just that you forget to take them. Things get too hectic. A window doesn't open and the next thing you know, you're looking at a load screen in a lift. It's like a mystery man as well who sends you these cryptic messages. Some of them help you, some of them don't. At this stage you're not too clear on what side he's on. It's a little bit like the Shroud stuff from Fallout 4. I do like it. They're going in with the right angle on the mystery and 
detective noir angle. Think a little bit like Booker DeWitt's plot in Burial at Sea. I love the unravelling of all of that and the sort of secret messages that you get at any given time during a lot of the mission campaigns. They are our misbegotten children, born of hubris. I don't understand. Oh. Investigate it. Heavy weapons, reload perk, hot damn. This game is quite good to play once you've got your character up and running and you've chosen a sort of direction that you want to go in. I did miss the amount of points that you get to spend on your abilities in this game is crazy. You almost have too many, you're like 10 every time you rank up and you end up spraying stuff that you're not even sure you're gonna need. Then you go into a conversation and you realize you've got the rank of a simpleton and you have to go back and pump it all into speech. We've all been there. Hey, you, you serious? So what else stands out other than the sort of upped marauders? You've also got some elements applied to the giant ant beast queen things, which may be frost or something even more horrific. And that also ups the resistance to a lot of equivalents that you've got on your side. And they are, again, as mentioned before, just a lot more bullet spongy. You're gonna need bigger weapons. You're gonna need Felix's kick 24 seven. have done me a bit Sean Murray with just reworking original models you've got the primal ape things that have been up a little bit I'm not going to show you them because they're slightly towards the end of the DLC and there's quite a lot of story spoilers I would recommend this not for its alien variety and change but for its quite funny and interesting story and you've got some cool new weapon variants which I like the idea of along with some cool cosmetic stuff anyone else feel like the walls are almost Leaning in. This is like that scene from Terror on Monarch, where Spencer Woolrich gets buried alive. Not as linear as I imagined. There's some secret caves around. That map is a bit of a head doer. It will take you the longest route to something that seems to be the closest. They put mountains right in between compulsory point A and compulsory point B. But my angle is that you still are greeted with some newer looking environments and then you've got these cool new enemy variants thrown in. It does feel quite fresh. Should you look at this, if you're a fan of the Outer Worlds base game, 100% yes. If you can get to it for a discounted price on a DLC front, i.e. both of them bowled in, then it's a complete no-brainer. If you've got access to that Epic Store, then this is a joy to be able to try the whole game out with all of that extra content for nothing. Something about the tunnels here gets under your skin and into the worst parts of your head. If you got that sort of bundle, Game of the Year, all in edition, and have only played base game and not got to either of these pieces of DLC, then you must. It's really worth looking at. I just would not go out and pay full price for these pieces separately. I think because of the game's age, they're going to be available extremely cheaply. And that reminds me, 11th of April is today. The Fallout TV show comes out and it hasn't underperformed. I'm hearing some okay things about it. Have you guys started watching it yet? Having a bit of a sci-fi weekend over here at Couch Coop headquarters with Dead Space 2 getting a look at on Saturday. Memories of the game are not unpleasant. The third one was a bit of a nightmare. Be very much looking forward to putting that under the microscope because again it's going to be on the PC and I'm going to be running it at better specs to what I remember it looking like I think on the Xbox 360. Also like remake rumours flying around about it and then they've been quashed so I'll get some clarification on that. was of course couch cube thank you very much for watching the entire video please like please comment drop us a sub and if you've got any smaller creators that you haven't committed to on the subscription front go out there and support them i'll see you down there